Welcome to the Eye of the Storm, sponsored by Florida International University's International Hurricane Research Center and the Florida Division of Emergency Management. In this video, we're going to learn about the important role that TV meteorologists play in communicating hurricane information to their viewers. And then we'll learn what the American Red Cross does to provide disaster relief after the hurricane. Well down to our south, of course, is the actual hurricane. There's the eye clearly picked up by our radar just off the Cuban coast. Again, we're seeing it from a great distance here, and uh, it's uh, really great to be able to track this system. Hello, I'm John Morales, Chief Meteorologist of NBC6 here in South Florida. I became a meteorologist because uh, I grew up in Puerto Rico. I was very interested in tracking tropical storms and hurricanes across the Atlantic and in the Caribbean. In 1979, there was a big Category 5 hurricane that struck the Dominican Republic after passing south very close to Puerto Rico. Uh, that hurricane, named David, I think was the clincher uh, for me to pursue uh, this career. Uh, I also uh, started the career with the National Weather Service, worked seven years there, and then for the past uh, now almost 30 years, I am in my 30th year now, of uh, broadcasting here in South Florida, 18 years in Spanish language TV, and now in my 12th year for NBC. Uh, this hurricane's wind field is just so impressively gigantic that, I mean, it's just amazing yeah. that we have measured wind gusts already, Jose, to 94 miles per hour at Miami International Airport. So this hurricane already about 10 miles per hour higher in its gusts than it was expected to be. and. Uh, what I've enjoyed the most about being a meteorologist on TV is uh, being able to warn people about impending, disruptive, or dangerous weather in a calm way. As a TV meteorologist, like all here, uh, broadcast meteorologists in South Florida, our mission is to save life and property, same mission as the National Weather Service has. Uh, so in my particular case, I do it a little bit differently than others, but I think people have come to appreciate that. One of the key messages that I have for folks uh, heading into this hurricane season is to be aware that it is expected to be a very active season. And while it only takes one, if there are more storms out there, there's going to be a greater chance that one of them might affect South Florida and the Florida Keys. Unfortunately, uh, in recent decades, we've seen a greater proportion of tropical storms increasing in intensity and becoming major category three, four, and five hurricanes. As a matter of fact, there is scientific evidence that we are seeing a greater proportion of tropical cyclones becoming category four and five. In the Florida Keys, you are about to witness one of the worst hurricanes in the history of this country. And it, this thing is fixing to, as I used to say when I worked in Lake Charles, Louisiana, this thing is fixing to be a category five hurricane pretty soon. Those are, of course, the most catastrophic hurricanes. And uh, my message to you is that you never know when one of those systems out there could become that type of a catastrophic disaster. And I would anticipate, therefore, that everybody take this seriously and uh, follow the proper steps to prepare yourself for this hurricane season and when there's a threat out there. Pretty good weather here as we continue to see that pressure gradient, high pressure and low pressure. So, gradients. how does a TV weather cast work? Usually, you see your local TV weather person standing in front of a weather map. But in a real television studio, there's no weather map there, there's a green wall behind them. So, it's all through the magic of electronics where they electronically take the map from a computer and then put it into the color green. That's what you see at home, but that's not what I see in the studio. I see a green wall. So how do I know where I'm pointing? Well, to do it, I can see a TV right in front of me as I talk about a map behind me, and I can also see a TV to my right, a TV to my left. So as I point to the wall, I know what I'm pointing to because of the TV monitors helping me see that weather map. And that's how they do a TV weather cast. We're going to get things started with Chief Meteorologist Phil Farrow for everything we need to know about Irma. Phil, take it away. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I wish I had better news regarding this system. It is a Hello, my name is Chief category. Meteorologist Phil Farrow. I became a meteorologist because of my love for weather, especially after going through a few hurricanes here across South Florida. They kind of raised my passion for uh, hurricane forecasting, and that's what led me to become a meteorologist. Can't even stress enough just how incredible this is 
that we are so far removed from the impact, the direct impact of, a, uh, of an incredible strong system across the uh, Florida Keys. And yet, hundreds of miles away, here we are dealing with an incredible storm surge, incredibly strong winds, heavy rainfall, and it's not going to stop anytime soon. And if, and what if do I, I enjoy the most about being a meteorologist on TV? Communicating, especially warning you, the viewer, about any threat coming across South Florida, whether it be in the form of a tropical wave, tropical storm, or a hurricane, making sure that you are safe is what drives me to be a better on-air meteorologist. My role is basically to be uh, the go-between uh, between the National Hurricane Center and the audience. I have to take all the information that the National Hurricane Center is providing me and uh, basically uh, simplifying it so that we can get the message across of what to do, where to go if an evacuation order has been issued, and how to stay safe. That is my important or the most important role of a TV meteorologist. So the key messages are very simple. Know where the system is, how strong it is, where it is going, and what you have to do. Once you have all that data with you, you are able to make a better decision as to whether stay and whether the storm go to a shelter or maybe leave town and go someplace else where the hurricane is not threatening. So what the American Red Cross does, it prevents and alleviates human suffering in the face of uh, emergency by mobilizing the power of volunteers and the generosity of donors. We feed, we shelter people through the efforts of all these volunteers. We also offer our disaster mental health services and our disaster health services and other lines of service per case. And the reason I joined the American Red Cross is to fulfill my calling to provide that beacon of hope in the time of need. So for me, when I respond to a disaster, whether it be a hurricane, floods, and so forth, for me is to alleviate that person. For that brief moment when I, I know when I arrive to that person's home, that they're gonna feel, you know, everything's gonna be okay at the end. It's all gonna be okay, this too shall pass. To me, it's all about the smiles. If I leave that home and that person at least smiled once, we did it. We at least provided that temporary relief in the meantime, during that traumatic experience. But simple things as, you know, giving somebody comfort kits, they just burst in tears. They lost everything. And we're giving something so simple as a comfort kit. And they just burst into tears and of joy. And, you know, they see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. That's a, that's a key thing we have to make sure that we are really serving them and that they, they see that light at the end of the tunnel. What are some of the general key messages the American Red Cross has for residents with regards to the hurricane preparedness? Uh, prepare, prepare, prepare. I mean, get your emergency preparedness kit, what we call a go bag, uh, make an emergency plan, stay informed with your local government, the uh, weather, uh, weather stations according to typical weathers you would have in your area, whether it be hurricanes, floods, wildfires, safety. Safety, safety. We're continuing to work with emergency management and the local uh, public health authorities to decide the best approach for sheltering in any disaster affected uh, area. Our goal is to provide any uh, anyone in need with a safe place to stay where they feel comfortable and welcomed. We also are protecting both the safety of our workforce and the people we serve. How does someone get involved as a volunteer at the American Red Cross? What's that process? So they would have to visit our website at www.redcross.org forward slash volunteer. There they can uh, see opportunities, whether that be to work at a shelter, feeding, logistics, or communications, to name a few things. And when becoming a volunteer, what are some of the different things that they might do? Again, they would be working either as a shelter worker, helping people at that capacity. They would either be uh, also feeding the community or feeding at the shelter. They would also be doing logistics, helping uh, the planning of the, of the process. 
uh, communications, getting the word out there, whether that be through social media or through other media outlets. Any um, words of encouragement for any students uh, who might be interested to consider the American Red Cross as a career? It's a great opportunity to get you, uh, to get to uh, start your career as an emergency management. Uh, if you want to do fundraising, if you are into communications, or if you just want to learn humanitarian law, it's a good place to start your career. One thing I like to share is uh, from the Italian Red Cross is be smart, be safe, and be kind. Ray, I really do appreciate your time, really appreciate uh, your service to the community and what you do and your partnership uh, with FIU and the Museum of Discovery and Science and the Florida Division of Emergency Management on this uh, great uh, education uh, video series. Thank you. My pleasure. And also special thanks to Chief Meteorologist John Morales from NBC6 and Chief Meteorologist Phil Farrell from WSVN. Eye of the Storm is sponsored by the Florida Division of Emergency Management and Florida International University's International Hurricane Research Center. Follow along with the Museum of Discovery and Science all season long.